Today we'll be unwrapping the greatest gift, which is Jesus, through the eyes of the shepherds. Okay, and this is, I think, one of the highlight texts in the Christmas message. We'll be looking at Luke chapter 2, verse 8, down to verse 16. And let's just bow down our heads and pray, Lord, we thank you. Lord, thank you for Christmas. Lord, thank you because, Lord, the message of Christmas is about you giving your life to us. And I pray, Lord, that we would get the same spirit. Lord, I pray, Lord, that even as we study your word today, it would touch our hearts and do something in us, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we'll get to see who you truly are so that we can celebrate Christmas in the right way. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, let's look at Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And it says there, in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. Just the context of this verse. The Bible says that uh, angels appeared to the shepherds out in the field. Now, if you are the writer of a story, and you're about to write one of the greatest rescue story ever, and you want to herald this, you want to spread this message who would you choose as the characters who would spread your message? The shepherds during that time were like the lowliest of the low. They were smelly, they were dirty, they were poor, and they couldn't even go to the temple because they were taking care of unclean animals. So for a shepherd to go to the temple, he needs to clean himself, and after three days, go to the temple. It means he has no work for three days, which he cannot afford because he is a shepherd. And out of all the characters in Scripture... During the New Testament time, God chose the shepherds and revealed to the shepherd the good news that Jesus has been, uh, is born. Now, why the shepherds? If you look through the last three weeks, we look at Zechariah, a small town priest. We look at Mary, who was around 13 to 16 years old, poor peasant girl. Okay? You look at Joseph, who was a poor carpenter from the town of Nazareth, where nothing good comes out. He, God would use common denominator, nameless, faceless, seemingly insignificant people for the message of the gospel. The question is, why? Why, why shepherds? Who would believe if you reveal yourself to the shepherds? Now, what's the meaning behind this? I think one of the meaning behind this and one of the lessons we can see why God chose the shepherds is because Christmas is never about us. It's never about you. Doesn't matter who you are. This is for you, but it's never about you. You're not the hero. God doesn't want to choose someone who thinks he's famous enough that when you tell it to me, I'll be the one to share it to the world. Why? Because we're not the hero of the story. Jesus is. Christmas is never about us. That's why he would always, throughout Scripture, use nameless, faceless, and seemingly insignificant people to spread the gospel message. Pinipili niya tayo, mga simple tao, to go out and do his work. One more thing we can see here is this. The reason he chose the shepherd was because he was giving to us a message that by his grace... Everybody has access to Him. Even people whom you won't notice. You won't even say hi to the shepherds. Bakit? Mabaho sila eh. Madumi yan. You won't even, uh, you're, you would be remotely connected to a shepherd if a shepherd lives in our culture today. But then, He gives the biggest announcement that has been an Old Testament prophecy to whom? To a group of shepherds. That's the grace of God. We are like shepherds. Dirty, smelly, cannot enter the temple, and clean. That's who we are apart from Christ. It was when Christ came here on earth that we've experienced His grace. And that's why He chose the shepherds. It's a great reminder for everyone here that God could choose you and me. Seemingly insignificant. Some of you, you're thinking, why would God notice me? What have I contributed to the kingdom? But God uses people like you and me. And God wants to use us to advance His kingdom. God wants to use us 
by us first experiencing the grace of God and the love of God and sharing this to others. Christmas is never about us. It's about Christ. It's about His story. Okay? Now, next verse. It says, And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. And what was the good news that would bring great joy to all people? He says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a what? Manger. When you would ask an ordinary people, what is Christmas? Most will answer, it's about this baby in a manger, okay. born of a virgin birth. Now, those are good, but as you can see in verse 12, these are just signs. This is not the message of Christmas. The nativity scene is not the message of Christmas. It is an introduction to a story that has an underlying message. So Christmas is not about nativity. It's not a way in a manger, no crib for a bed, okay? It's not those songs. Those, those songs are nice because it tells us a story, but it is not the story of Christmas. What's the story of Christmas? Can somebody shout? What's the story of Christmas? <laughs> All right? Right? We've been taught this is the story of Christmas. It's always nativity, the Belen. The parole, the star, the wise men, those are all part of a bigger story that has an underlying message. And that, that's been our point for the past three weeks. Your story is part of a bigger story. You are not the story. You're just the, ano, like in a Christmas play, ikaw yung puno. Or ikaw yung baha You're not the hero of the story. I know your parents videotape those. But you're not the star of the story. What's the underlying message of Christmas? What is Christmas? You go to verse 11. It says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a what? A Savior who is what? Christ the Lord. The underlying message of Christmas is that Jesus is Savior and that Jesus is Lord. That's why when we say every day is Christmas, it's true in its essence. Why? Because if you understand, and if you made Jesus your Savior, and you made Jesus your Lord, then you got the whole message. This is the message of Christmas. It's not the baby Jesus. It is that Jesus is Savior, and that Jesus is Lord. Where does God save us from? Jesus save us from our what? From our sin. It is the cross. Introduction, manger, climax, cross. That's why the underlying message of Christmas is Jesus is Savior and that Jesus is what? Lord. What does Lord mean? Lord means what? Master, leader, the one who calls the shot. Question I want to ask everyone here, is Jesus your master? Is Jesus your Savior? Because that's the meaning of Christmas. That's what I said, Christmas is not about you. It doesn't matter if you receive your bonus or not. Now, for some of you, it matters. But in reality, in light of eternity, it doesn't really matter if you receive your bonus or your 14th or your 15th month day. It doesn't really matter if you receive gifts from loved ones or they forgot about you. I hope as you celebrate Christmas tonight, Christmas Eve, I hope it will never be about you. I hope we get the message. And I don't want to ruin your party. But I hope you get the message. Because for a lot of people, like those in the correctional, those who are poor, wala naman silang pamilya. But if you get the message of Christmas, and some of you, wala pa kayong girlfriend ngayong Pasko. Malamig na naman. Okay lang yun. Mag-jacket ka. Okay? Bakit? Buo ka na eh. Why? Because you got the message. Jesus is Lord Jesus is Savior. This is Christmas. My kids need to understand it's not just the manger. It's about the throne of Christ. It's about Jesus dying on the cross for my sin. It's about Jesus being Lord. Jesus taking His place in the hearts of the people. 
This is the message of Christmas. Okay. Verse 12. This will be a sign. Ibig sabihin ng sign, sign means it's pointing to something, right? When it says, Metro Manila, five kilometers, you don't stand there and say, I'm in Metro Manila. It's pointing you to go someplace else. It says comfort room, you don't do your thing in the side. You go to a room where you can do your comfort. Okay? Okay, whatever, okay? Diba? And the sign was a baby in a manger pointing to an underlying message. And what's the message? Very simple. Jesus is Savior. Jesus is Lord. If I understand Jesus is my Savior, Jesus is my Lord, it gives me what? Great, what? According to the scripture, great joy. That's why people, if you, if you hear people say, I don't feel the Christmas spirit. You know why? Very simple. Because you don't get the underlying message of Christmas. You think it's still about you. You, think, you, till, you still think you're the Lord. You still think it should center around you and you need to receive this and you're entitled to this certain celebration and certain gifts so that Christmas will be happier. It's not about us. Christmas is about Jesus. Not just about Jesus, but about Jesus being Lord and Jesus being Savior. We're about to, our, uh, to end the year. Okay? And it's a good time to assess. 2016, have I made Jesus my Savior? Is He my source of life? My source of identity? My source of strength? And have I made Him Lord? Do I really serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Because this is Christmas. Okay? Jesus is Savior and Lord. The very message of Christmas. Dagdagan mo ho, 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 pwede rin. But don't miss the message. Jesus is Savior and Jesus is Lord. What that means is when we gave the echo bag of groceries, this wasn't the meaning. Christmas is not even about giving. I give to declare a message. It's not about the party. Now, why do I go to the party? If it means I can declare that Jesus is Savior and Lord, and I'm not KJ, so that they could hear the story that Jesus is Lord and Savior, I'll do it. Okay? If it means it would open doors for us to have a work in Barangay Santa Lucia, Barangay Pasadena, where the groceries as gifts, those are our entry point for an underlying message that Jesus is the one who saves and Jesus is Lord. You'll be amazed. Nagkikwento si Francis na yung mga experience ng mga volunteers natin. Pinag- Kasi pinag- when we give, we also pray. We don't do general mass prayer. With all our volunteers, we tell them now, go to the families and start praying for them. Stories upon stories of people crying. Simple prayers that you make for common people like all of us here who's going through the same kind of problems and praying. I prayed for a group of kids in Barangay Pasadena. Niko, anong prayer nyo? Anong gusto nyo yung pag-pray natin? Milit pa, mga eight, nine years old. So, simple. Pag-pray nyo na yung daddy ko magkatrabaho na para makakain kami. Right? And this is from an eight-year-old boy. You see, all of us, how can I be able to declare a message if I don't give? My giving is a sign for an underlying message. The story that Jesus is King, He's Savior, and He is Lord. Okay. And what happened? When, when the declaration happened, God made the statement, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Savior. And suddenly, there was with the, angel, with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying what? Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom He is what? Pleased. When the declaration was made, Jesus is Savior, Jesus is Lord, Angels came out saying, glory to God in the highest. And when the glory of God comes, there will be what? Peace. It's not with the new president. It's not with the political savior which they thought Jesus was. It was when people learn how to give the glory back to God. When we understand everything we do is for the glory of God and not for my glory, not for the glory of men, peace will come. 
But if it's still about you, what will happen? There will be no peace. There's always something trying to prove. I need to prove something to the world. I need to prove something to my parents. I need to prove something. Yeah. That's why even our gifts, right? Nako, mayaman yan. Dapat mas mahal gift ko. Yung sa mahirap, ito na, yung tira-tira ko. Why? You're trying to prove something. It's on that same spirit. Why? Because it is what? What would people think about me? What if my gift, they don't like it? na insecure ka, magbibigay ka na nga, na-insecure ka pa. Right? And so, as we see, the spirit of Christmas is, if we understand that Christmas is about God's glory, it's not even about me, it's not even about you, it's about Christ, it's all about Christ, what happens? The peace of God comes. And on earth, peace among men. Okay. Where the glory of God is, there is peace. Or we call it shalom. Yeah. Ibig sabihin, shalom is such a powerful word. Shalom means nothing is missing, nothing is broken. When we live for the glory of God, supernatural peace or shalom comes. That I could make a declaration, nothing is missing, nothing is broken. Let's look uh, again. It's not about us. Life is not about us. It's about responding to the underlying message of the scripture that Jesus is Lord and Jesus is Savior. Joy comes. And because of that, the result is we give glory to God in everything that we do and shalom comes. Okay? Nothing missing, nothing broken. Yun yung sinasabi ko. Imagine... Today, all of us will have different scenarios tonight. Some of you have to visit a parent in the hospital. Some of you will be eating lechon. Lahat, skin, laman, dahon. <laughs> yung iba sa inyo, magbibidyo okay kayo hanggang 3 a.m. at hindi nyo papatulogin yung kapitbahay niya. Yung iba sa inyo, Tumawag girlfriend mo, nakikipag-break up sa'yo ngayong gabi. <laughs> Sama talaga. <laughs> okay. Diba? Hindi ko alam anong scenario niya ngayong gabi. Right? All of us will have different scenarios. But imagine this. When I live for the glory of God, peace on earth will come. Shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. It means I can be in the hospital worshiping with my loved one saying, O come all ye faithful, as a night of worship on that hospital bed. And the peace of God can come upon that room as if there's nothing missing and nothing broken. Because the day will come where the kingdom of God will come. There was sabi sa Bible, no tears, no sickness, nothing missing, nothing broken. Or you could be a reunion, laughing with relatives, and enjoying shalom. Or you could be with family, whom you know this month, your parents might get fired, your husband might get fired, but there's supernatural peace. We've got members who lost their baby this year. And you know, Christmas will not be the same for them. But then, as they live for the glory of God, nakita mo na yung picture ng Noche Buena? Malungkot na masaya, nagwo-worship. Bakit? May shalom eh. Alam nila, we're living for the glory of God. Nothing missing. There's nothing broken. And I declare that to everyone here today. And you need to declare that over your lives. Lord, as I live out for the glory of your name, I declare shalom over my family. I declare shalom over my life, over our hearts, over our church, even over our nation, as we live for the glory of God.